Hi everybody, welcome to Dash Digital Cash Brazil. Rod here and today I have the pleasure to speak with Ernesto Contreras. He is the business developer uh, for Latin America, a official Dash Core team employee. Ernesto, welcome. How are you? Oh, hi Rodrigo. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's uh, I'm a big fan of your programs and I was really looking forward to speaking to your audience. So hi guys. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate your time. And let's talk about Latin America, uh, a market for Dash, which being which has been the most important one related to Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Brazil, and other countries as well. Why is it important for the Dash Core team to have a position like yours? Yeah. Well, um, number one, let me talk to you a bit about the opportunities we see here. And that's the reason why, why there's a position like me. Um, you know, in, in developed markets, there's a lot of things that are working properly. And, you know, you're a Brazilian, you know how, how it is. And, and of course, this is not meant to be uh, uh, bad talking, but we understand that in our markets, there's a lot of things that don't work properly. You know, you go to the bank, you need to uh, go before a certain time. Sometimes the institutions don't move the money as fast. So there is a lot of potential for actually using the power of cryptocurrencies and the power of Dash in Latin America. So Dash Group about a year and a half ago evaluated this and saw that we had a bunch of opportunities in Latin America and said, well, let's bring someone that uh, has contact with this market and that has been in, in a few places of those. And then they started searching and I was lucky and blessed to have found Dash and, and uh, you know, show my value to the Dash team. Uh, I've been working in emerging markets for about 14 years. Uh, I was in Asia for some time. I'm a Venezuelan, I'm living in Mexico. So I think that with the, the business experience I have uh, uh, provided to Dash Core Group that I could help them in, in growing this market. Yeah, not talking even about that uh, uh, Latin America, we are specialists on hyperinflation, talking about Venezuela, Brazil, uh, Argentina, we had hyperinflation for, for many, many years, uh, Colombia as well, and then, you know, decisions that government and central banks make that devastated the financial power of the population. And, and today, what's the main strategy that uh, the core team is using for Latin America? What's the main goal? Yeah, well, you're talking about inflation and, and economy, and it's really interesting. Sometimes you see interviews of people that live, you know, in Europe or the U.S., and they freak out when growth is not the, that one extra percent they wanted. But when you go to Latin America, it's quite common that, you know, inflation is 10 percent, and a Brazilian would say, oh, this year was not so bad. And, and then <laughs> so that gives a lot of room for people to use cryptocurrency. So our goal was to find the places where Dash can find the better fit to solve the greatest need. So in Latin America, we've identified two sectors where we believe there's a good opportunity that we can solve problems. One sector is the remittance market. And we're looking initially at the corridor between the US and Mexico where there's billions of dollars sent every day, but you know, you gotta go, you gotta wait in line, you gotta pay 8%, 10%, then the exchange rate is not the best. And we know, because we used it, that with Dash, you can you know, just send that remittance, it will take a few seconds and you will uh, not spend not even 1%. So that is one uh, opportunity we saw. The other opportunity was to work in economies that because of inflation, things in the financial system are not working properly. And that means mostly Venezuela. But this is, check this out, this is really interesting. We saw Venezuela, things are not working there because of hyperinflation, but something that has evolved as the situation has not been solved yet, and I pray to God that it gets solved really quickly, is that the Venezuelan opportunity or the Venezuelan situation has spread to many other countries. So now the strategy of Venezuela has also become a remittance strategy for other countries that are surrounding Venezuela or for other countries that are close to Venezuela and want to provide services into Venezuela. So it's really funny that the Venezuelan strategy 
has more or less become a multi-country strategy centered around solving problems in Venezuela. Yeah, I've seen a couple more proposals uh, related to Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Spain about uh, remittances business, which there is a huge opportunity in my case as well. I got into Bitcoin and late into Dash, looking into a way to send money to my parents in Brazil while work was working abroad. So it is uh, where uh, we should focus uh, a a as well. And uh, most important, what are, what's the plan for business integration and, of course, exchange integration, knowing that Brazil has an explosion of exchanges as we've been working together for a couple of months now, implementing Instant Send on, on a few of them. And Brazil today, we, ha we have over 65 exchanges for cryptocurrencies. Yeah, well, um, the exchange uh, strategy for Latin America is, is twofold. Number one, and, and I forgot to mention, you know, the strategy that I mentioned with two areas is supported by an exchange integration, because if we don't have exchanges with good liquidity, exchanges that are working properly, then it will be very difficult for people to access Dash in an easy way. So the exchange integration is we need to get as many fiat pairs as possible until we cover all of Latin America. and. As a parallel uh, stage to that is, we need to make sure most of these exchanges are working with instant send. And here's something very interesting about instant send. When you're sending, let's say, uh, imagine you're a trader in, in Brazil, and you see that, you know, um, CoinBene, which we uh, partnered recently, has a very different price than 3x bit. If you're working with Bitcoin, and you send your Bitcoin from 3xbit to CoinBene, it might take you know between 30 to 60 minutes, depending on how many confirmations each of these exchanges take. So by the time your Bitcoin arrives to this exchange, then the arbitrage opportunity might be over or might be much lower. But if you do that through instant send, and both exchanges have the instant send functionality operating, it will take two seconds for you to move your Dash into the other exchange, even if you want to you know, trade in another coin. If your opportunity is in Bitcoin or in another of the smaller uh, cap altcoins and you use Dash, you can use two seconds to move it and then the arbitrage opportunity it, it will still be there. So that is a large opportunity that we've identified and that we're working on getting more exchanges to have instant send because that will allow for traders to have good opportunities and also it will help the exchanges to have liquidity because you know if a big whale comes and buys all the whatever in one exchange then you can move it through that and bring liquidity so that's that's a great opportunity and we found that our partners like it and you know we're working hard on, on getting into them and that's why you know i want to say publicly Many times you come and you talk to me and you say, hey, man, we have this opportunity with this exchange. <laughs> and I'm like, Rodrigo, yeah, but hold on. Let's do it with instant send. So, you know, sometimes you got to go back and talk to the exchange and, you know, exchange friends. That is one of the reasons why Rodrigo comes back to you and says, hey, let's do instant send. Because we know that it can drive a lot of value to you and your customers. So that, that is the instant send part of the strategy, Rodrigo. Nice. Yeah. And now with all the documentation that you gave it to me a couple months ago, I've been working with another three exchanges. So soon we can have some good news about more exchanges in Brazil uh, accepting uh, Instant Send, which they already accept Dash. But uh, right now, you as a Venezuelan as well, talk a little bit about the situation in Venezuela because you saw the documentary I shot there uh, 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 last year. I, I would love to go back there this year, but I'm, I'm not going to go. I mean, the, the situation is very tense. Hopefully, I can go back to Venezuela to do another part of the documentary. But what's the situation there currently? Well, it's uh, it's really interesting. Um, I, I I was featured in a podcast, and we recorded the podcast in the end of May. But the podcast went live. I'm sorry, in the end of March, and the podcast was went live on the last day of April or the first day of May. I don't remember. And during that short time, things changed. So that is just uh, an example to show you that things are changing very fast. From the political perspective, I'm not even going to talk about, but from the economic perspective, things are changing, you know, at cryptocurrency speed. Um, 
in the last four weeks, more or less, there have been a few major changes. Number one, uh, the government provided some flexibility on the currency uh, uh, transfer and procedures. So now it is not as difficult as it was before from a legal point of view to buy and sell uh, other currencies, currencies other than the Bolivar. And that's, you know, that, that's kind of great because uh, we, we don't know for sure if that includes crypto, but it's for sure opening up a door. And as a result of that, we are seeing more and more major players jumping into this crypto stage. You know, we just saw Tracky, which is uh, to provide your audience uh, 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 context. Tracky is similar to, let's say, the Walmarts or the Sears of the uh, world. So it's a very large chain everywhere. Yesterday, we saw that Samsung stores, the official Samsung stores, I saw also it. started working through our partner Crypto Buyer. And I know of more stores that are, you know, looking to do this. And the reason is, you know, the, the, the Bolivar system is not working properly. There's uh, many things, you know, if you want to pay. Uh, I have a friend. He, the bank called him to say, hey, we just uh, approve a new credit card for you. Come pick it up. When he went and picked it up, the limit was $2.7. It's kind of sad, isn't it? So it's, it's sad. And then crypto is providing a solution. So we have the teams that were originally operating there, Dash Venezuela with Eugenia and the merchants with Lorenzo and the others. And they did, you know, the, the, the great job of laying the first foundations. And because of that, now things are being built and we have a competitive advantage in top uh, uh, ahead of the other coins, you know. Now everyone wants to go to Venezuela. Now everyone's talking about Venezuela. And it's really great that Dash has already been doing a lot of the work here. And, and you know, just recently there was a few conferences and, and some of them are hosted uh, uh, by, by people that are openly not Dash fans. But they could not deny that we have a foot in the door and that we've done some of the things that had never been done before. We're not, you know, at the level of mass adoption. I want to leave that clear. But if you compare maybe Caracas to other places in the world, uh, you can live off of Dash in Caracas. And if I wanted to buy things with Dash here in Mexico City, I need to drive 20 minutes and go to that one place. So there's an advantage there. There's still a huge opportunity to continue growing. And I'm really happy to see that, you know, more teams are continuing to do stuff there. The, the Colombia team has grown tremendously, and now they're also looking how to serve Venezuela through a remittance project. And uh, yesterday, I was very happy to speak to a bunch of entrepreneurs who saw me speaking in Caracas last year, and I told them, hey, man, there's opportunities to do stuff here. And yesterday, they called and they said, well, we heard you, and now we're building a solution that can work here. So there's many things that can happen there, and, and there's a lot of room to grow, and Dash will solve uh, some of the people's problems with, uh, with finances. So that's, uh, that's great for business, and that's great as a person. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can't wait to go back to Venezuela. I, I was surprised when I, I was there and I saw everything that they built, and in Colombia as well, when I did the second part of the documentary. I can't wait to see a, a, a Dash community, a strong Dash community in Argentina, for example. Uh, Brazil is not really about uh, business adoption, but more about trading, arbitrage, and exchanges, and, and large volumes and masternodes uh, 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 for investors as well. So yeah. different markets, different strategy, but definitely it's a, extremely important to know that the core team has a business dev the developer, uh, a leader, uh, like you as well, creating a strategy for the adoption and supporting all the proposed owners. So Ernesto, thank you very much for your time. And I really hope to meet you uh, again soon uh, so we can uh, discuss in person some uh, Dash opportunities. Yeah, thank you. Just one last, la last comment. When you spoke about the communities in Brazil and Argentina, this is something I've told different community owners or, or proposal owners. What is the problem you're solving? You know, because... Cryptocurrency is not going to get adopted just because it's cool and just because, you know, you, you can pay with it. Proposal owners need to look for what is the problem they want to solve. So it sounds like in Brazil, 
so far we have only solved the, the, the trading problem. But I'm sure there's many other situations where we can find an opportunity and solve it. And that is, you know, what the teams in Venezuela and Colombia have done. And I'm sure that, you know, a very smart Brazilian guy or girl will find an opportunity and do it. And then soon we're going to have this conversation, you know, in beautiful Rio or, or beautiful Brasilia, Rodrigo. I can't wait, Ernesto. Thank you very much.